Hello Crawford Adventist Academy. We are delighted to be part of your virtual week in spiritual emphasis program. I am Antoinette Hall, an information technology student of Adventist University of the Philippines. Our university is located in the beautiful country of the Philippines. We just celebrated our 104th founding anniversary last February 1 of this year. That's how long we have been sharing Christ's mission here in the Philippines and throughout the world. It is a privilege for us to host today's program with the theme, New Physically. We have prepared a special program for you to be refreshed and revived with songs and words from the scriptures. First, we will be listening to choral music by two choirs of the university. This will be followed by a scripture reading and the invocation. We will be serenaded again with special music to be rendered by the College of Medicine Chorale and PIC Orchestra. Our speaker for this special program is the Advancement Director of the University, Mr. Oimer Dekila. May we all experience the blessing of the Holy Spirit as we have our program today. Oh, 
The scripture reading will be taken from the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It reads from the New International Version. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Brothers and sisters, I invite you now to join me in prayer. Let's bow. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time you have given us to gather together. We thank you that your spirit of unity has allowed us from the Adventist University of the Philippines and our brothers and sisters at the Crawford Adventist Academy to join together in this time of spiritual unity. We pray, Lord, that you will be with us as we go through this program. May your presence guide us and bless us. Be with us now and always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Dear Crawford Adventist Academy, I bring you greetings all the way from the Philippines. Thank you for this privilege to be part of your virtual week in spiritual emphasis program. I am Owimer Dakila, the Advancement Director of the Adventist University of the Philippines. And today, I entitled my message, Making the Right Choice, the Key to Be New Physically. Many people today are sick not because of viruses or communicable diseases, but all too frequently, the laws established by God to govern the life are flagrantly transgressed. Sin enters the heart, and man loses sight of his dependence upon God, the source of life and health. Then follow the penalties of transgression, pain, sickness, death. Sin have corrupted us. That's why we can no longer discern what is right from wrong. Did you know that there are many people dying because of heart attack, diabetes, and other lifestyle-related diseases than COVID? According to UN Chronicle by Fatma Al-Maskari, today, chronic diseases are a major public health problem worldwide. In 2005, the World Health Organization estimated that 61% of all deaths, that's 35 million people, and 49% of the global burden of disease were attributable to chronic diseases. By 2030, the proportion of total global deaths due to chronic diseases is expected to increase to 70% and the global burden of disease to 56%. These are all the result to the indulgences of our appetite. It is not the Creator's purpose that mankind shall be weighed down with the burden of pain, that his activities shall be curtailed by illness, that his strength wane and his life be cut short by disease. But all too frequently, the laws established by God to govern the life are flagrantly transgressed. Sin enters the heart and man loses sight of his dependence upon God, the source of life and health. Then follow the penalties of transgression, pain, sickness, and death. That is why the Lord is calling us back to Him, to have a renewing of the mind, soul, body, and spirit in Him. How? The first step is to go to Jesus. He is the way the truth and the life. Go back again to His Word. The truth of the Word of God are utterances of the Most High. He who makes these truths a part of His life becomes, a sense, a new creature. Second step, confess our sins to the Lord. He is more than willing to forgive us, for He is faithful and just to forgive us from all our sins. I remember a story in the Bible recorded in Matthew about the paralytic and the leper. Ellen White said, Like the leper, this paralytic had lost all hope of recovery. His disease was the result of a life of sin, and his sufferings were embittered by remorse. He had long before appealed to the Pharisees and doctors, hoping for relief from mental suffering and physical pain but they coldly pronounce him incurable and abandon him to the wrath of God. The Pharisees regarded the affliction as an evidence of divine displeasure, and they held themselves aloof from the sick and the needy. Yet often these very ones who exalted themselves as holy were more guilty than the sufferers they condemned. And this is from the Sire of Ages. The palsied man was entirely helpless, and seeing no prospect of aid from any quarter, he had sunk into despair. Then he heard of the wonderful works of Jesus. He was told that others as sinful and helpless as he had been healed, even lepers had been cleansed. And the friends who reported these things encouraged him to believe that he too might be cured if he could be carried to Jesus. But this hope fell when he remembered how the disease had been brought upon him. He feared that the pure physician 
would not tolerate him in his presence. Yet it was not physical restoration he desired so much as relief from the burden of sin. If he could see Jesus and receive the assurance of forgiveness and peace with heaven, he would be content to live or die according to God's will. The cry of the dying man was, Oh, that I might come into his presence. There was no time to lose. Already his wasted flesh was showing signs of decay. He besought his friends to carry him on his bed to Jesus, and this they gladly undertook to do. But so dense was the crowd that had assembled in and about the house where the Savior was, that it was impossible for the sick man and his friends to reach him, or even to come within hearing of his voice. The paralytic found in Christ's healing for both the soul and the body. The spiritual healing was followed by physical restoration. This lesson should not be overlooked. There are today thousands suffering from physical disease who, like the paralytic, are longing for the message, Thy sins are forgiven. The burden of sin with its unrest and unsatisfied desires is the foundation of their maladies. They can find no relief until they come to the healer of the soul. The peace which he alone can give would impart vigor to the mind and health to the body. Physical disease, however malignant and deep-seated, was healed by the power of Christ. But the disease of the soul took a firmer hold upon those who closed their eyes against the light. Leprosy and palsy were not so terrible as bigotry and unbelief. And so in our time, young people, we need to come to the Lord, to trust His healing mercies, His forgiveness, all He needs is for a willing heart to come to him he is willing to heal you and to restore you and most of all to forgive you from all your sins covid 19 and other communicable diseases taught as terrible and dreadful disease but remind you brethren young people there is more terrible and dreadful disease than those diseases and it is bigotry and unbelief i pray that we will cling on to jesus trust in his word and put our hearts to him i invite you to surrender your life to the lord again let me emphasize god's promise in first john 1 9 if you confess your sins he is faithful and just to forgive us from all our sins step three trust god jeremiah 30 17 says but i will restore you to health and heal your wounds and so, dear brothers and sisters, in Romans 12, 1, I plead you with you to give your bodies to God because all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think you know after trusting god after believing we need to have a new mind in christ if you are suffering from a chronic disease god can make you new god is our creator he can recreate us if we choose to follow that's why the fourth is we need to make a decision to choose god and to follow him god is giving us the choice he does not force the power to your health 
is in you. It is in your choices. To choose pure water, then soda. To choose a whole food vegetable, fruits and grains, then processed foods and fast foods. God is anxious to help us to restore our health and to prevent all diseases. The only key is a complete surrender to Him. Exercise self-control and temperance with your choices. It is the key to a new physically you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that the key to a revitalized and renewed body is a complete surrender to your will, O Lord, a complete and total obedience to your health laws, and a complete confidence in the forgiveness and the blood of Jesus Christ. May we continue to remember this, O Lord, and be healed from all our maladies. May the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen us, to purify us, and to cleanse us, and to restore us to our health. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What is your primary dream for your children's future? What is your plan, young man, young woman? To have a comfortable life because of a stable job or livelihood? Do you also dream for a healthy and happy family? Is growing a strong relationship with God part of that dream? Of using the best of your abilities, not only by being a blessing to your family, but also in serving others? How do you make those dreams come true? The answer could be an education from the Adventist University of the Philippines. How does one decide what is the best school? Is it the cost, distance from home, social status of the school and its students? One of the most commonly considered indicators of quality education when employers decide among applicants for a job is the performance of the graduates in the National Licensure Examinations. The passing rates of AUP programs are consistently higher than the national passing rate. The government recognized the continuing excellence or role in the national development of the teacher education and business administration in AUP. And it is not just in one or two professional programs with the excellence of the AUP education is nationally recognized. From preschool to graduate school, the Federation of Accrediting Agencies of the Philippines granted AUP the institutional accreditation recognition. This means the entire institution, the degrees offered by AUP, with its facilities, services, and faculty were rated as top quality. The Commission on Higher Education also granted the university with an autonomous status, indicating the highest recognition because of the AUP's commitment to excellence and institutional sustainability. Studying in AUP not only means a good professional preparation, but also greater chances of developing a healthy lifestyle. Fresh air on a wide campus, walking to classes, healthy food, quiet surroundings, exercising in the outdoors, a regular schedule of sleeping and waking up, all develop a healthy body to support a sound mind. Even the limited number of times a student is allowed to go out of the campus helps a student focus on studies. An important part of an AUP education is the hours where all students are required to work in the farm, grounds, or offices which develops the mind and body and strengthen the spirit of service. AUP education gives equal emphasis to social development, recognizing that youth is an ideal time to build lifelong relationships. 
Dormitory Live, where one learns to relate with roommates coming from different backgrounds and cultures. Membership in many organizations and groups prepare the students for professional and family life where strong interpersonal skills would be more important than technical know-how. The network of friendships developed in college would support graduates for the rest of their lives. Most important are the opportunities provided in AUP for students to spiritually grow. Morning and evening dorm worships, regular church services, small groups, and religious organizations are all part of the university experience in AUP. Weeks of prayer every semester remind students about their relationship with God and the meaning of life. The many ministry and mission groups help students find meaning in the greatest joy of all, helping and serving others. Spiritual growth is even part of the professional curriculum with the required Bible courses that focus on discipleship and ministry. A mission course in each degree prepares students for integrating Christian service in their profession. Some say that going to school in AUP is only for the rich. Compared to other universities with comparable academic recognition, tuition and fees in AUP are still cheaper. True, the cost of the dorm and the food would be more than a student studying near the family home. But the cost of putting our children, who are in their formative years, in a community where they can learn a healthy and holy lifestyle from other Christian young people and teachers is worth the sacrifice. The salvation of your children, and not just their professional education, would be their eternal inheritance and is the ultimate goal of every Christian parent. To open more opportunities, the university offers scholarships for academic achievers, for children of denominational employees, and work scholarship plans for the financially limited. It may take longer if one works while studying, but a committed person can get a quality Adventist education at AUP. Financial challenges can be overcome for those who make their faith in God the main basis for their choices. Even in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic, Christian education from AUP is still the best option. Online learning is available in all courses. Even chapel period and worship services are available online. Guidance counselors still connect to students even when they are not on campus. With the pandemic, the mental health of students all over the world is intentionally addressed. And for those who still want to benefit from a face-to-face -face learning community, the university still offers living inside the campus a good choice while taking online classes. Choose a better future for your children or for yourself. Not just for the next few years, but by God's grace, even for an eternity. Study at AUP.